In this video, I wanna break down the process of creating a professional comic book page. We're gonna be looking at page eight of episode four of the Star Atlas Core comic book that I'm working on. Now, one of the biggest challenges when you're creating comics is just managing the huge number of variables that come up. We often have to account for story, composition, drawing, making sure it's technical, and we need to carry through the idea of intent and what the story's meant to convey over Overall at the highest levels through to the finished details that we put on the page. So my hope is through walking you through my thoughts as I was creating this that I can share some of that complexity and hopefully break it down so that when you're creating your illustrations or your comic books that you can avoid a lot of the traps that might pop up and you can hopefully learn from my experience here. The things that I really want to talk about are the story process, how I go from the thumbnail to the finished product the intent, i.e. what that little bit of story is in relation to the larger story, both the entire book and that episode onto itself. I'll also talk about some of the drawing challenges that came up with this page, and lastly, a lot of the technical Photoshop bits and pieces that I use when I'm creating a page like this. Again, I'm an author who does the writing, the storyboarding, the drawing, the inking, the lettering, the coloring, the whole thing. So 100% of this page page is me and I can share with you exactly how I did it. So let's jump in and get started. Welcome to the Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, all of the tips and techniques and processes that I use when I'm creating my professional comics are actually things that I also teach. So if you're interested in learning more about the line and color process, this is where we create worlds with simple line and color for things like illustration, manga, comics, Bond Destiny, etc. You can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly, developing your own style in Photoshop. The link will be in the description. It's free. Go check it out. All right, let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll walk you through my initial process for how I put a page like this together. So here's the basic step-by-step. -step. We start with a thumbnail, which you can see over on the left here. And then I create a series of uh, sort of construction drawings or pencil drawings that you can see um, if we turn this one on and we sort of turn off that. So here you can see again, that's a good example of what the construction level, the penciling, the sort of rough drawing is before we go in and add the finished lines. Once I'm done with that, I use a very simple line and color process, almost exactly like what you would see in the quick start guide that you can sort of check out. So if you're interested in you know how that works, just check that out and I'll, I'll go through a lot of the, the process stuff in there. But here again, mostly what I wanna talk about is what are we thinking about as we create a page like this? So most of this starts with thinking about the page from a global perspective. What does this page actually need to do? What's its intent? And how does it fit in with the rest of the pages? So I'll actually be sharing, you know, a bunch of pages and, and sort of talking about the story um, so that we can actually sort of dial in on what this page, page number eight is, is sort of doing and, and how we sort of got to this point. And again, it's often that these other areas and other things are actually going to have a big impact on the decisions we make, you know, when we're drawing a specific panel. Um, it's often, again, something that happened a long time ago that we have to take into consideration so that when someone's reading it quite quickly, um, all of these things make sense. So the story in general is that what this page is about is our sort of, you know, three characters here who are kind of, you know, part of the team that sort of comes together in this story. They're kind of on the run and they've just run from this big kind of bar fight um, on a space station um, that they just kind of like had to run away from, right? Because they were, they were sort of superior forces. So this is the page before it. We have this character who just kind of like stepped in and essentially sort of ended this fight. Um, is kind of victorious and they're kind of saying, hey, like, you know, stop this crazy stuff. And this character is kind of saying, like, where did our sort of main three characters go? Because he, he sort of noticed they're gone, right? They got away while all this sort of chaos was happening. So we kind of need to transition to, like, 
um, tell that story of like what's happening. So part of storytelling in general with comics, again, is trying to sort of instigate the page turn. So a big part of, uh, you know, what you'll see in general um, of the, the strategy here is, is to kind of have a hook at the end of the page and then to kind of answer that a little bit with the next. So part of what's happening is we have this sort of end, right? This sort of um, piece that has happened after a whole bunch of sort of fight scenes and what we're kind of cutting to is again the fact that these guys are kind of running really fast right they're going sort of hell for leather um, and again you know they've kind of escaped so that's really the point of this this sort of story here um, and uh, to sort of transition from to sort of like where they are um, because to a certain degree from the very sort of you know start of the um, for, for the last few pages, they haven't actually been on there, so we haven't seen them. So that's really the point of this page. And again, it's a it's a big panel here, um, this kind of main panel. And the goal is to just kind of say, hey, this is sort of action. And we need to get a feeling for sort of speed. We need to make it really obvious that they're running fast, that they have run a, a, a far way, and that they're kind of in a different spot, right? So again, pretty simple uh, initiation of the page. The second sort of um, thing here is that what's happening is the characters are then sort of going to escape, right? They're going to sort of escape down into the bowels of this space station. And that's really what this is talking about because these characters don't actually know each other that well at this point. So we're trying to communicate that and um, instigate the fact that these characters are starting to sort of talk to each other a little bit. Again, if you want to read the, the rest of the story to sort of get context, um, I'll leave some links below in the description. It's a free sort of webcomic you can read um, and sort of, you know, keep up on. So anyway, that's kind of the idea of what this needs to be. Now, the page following it is... Um, them kind of saying that these these are basically these characters sort of starting to get to know each other and also them saying that they're going to all band together to try and find these sort of rogue um, uh, sort of vigilantes, right, that are now on the run. So we're trying to, with this page, we're really trying to instigate the fact that from a, from a high level point of view, a story point of view, these characters are running away. Like, yes, they have run away, um, and that leads on from the hook here. Where are they? Oh, here's where they are. They're running away, and then they've stopped running, and then they're going to sort of try and escape and, and sort of change. And then this pa that sort of leads on to this panel where these characters are kind of saying um, that, uh, you know, they're going to go and try and find and track these characters down. So, again, it kind of talks to the sort of chase aspect of the story here. And um, that's why we sort of have to hook this page in and sort of connect those two concepts together. That's really what it needs to do on that top level is, is just kind of connect these ideas together. So we're establishing where they are um, on this kind of station. And then we're establishing that, uh, again, this character here, the, the Timpo robot character, he kind of knows a little bit more about the station and he has a lot of sort of secrets that he's going to try and sort of, you know, hook these guys with. So he kind of descends into the depths, right? Which again, from a story point of view is very sort of, you know, similar to stuff, you know, you would have if you have your sort of, you know, Joseph Campbell, um, you know, hero with a thousand faces. A lot of that sort of monomyth um, ideology talks about sort of the descent, right? There is a point in the story where people kind of, you have to descend to sort of find the truth, right? You kind of, in um, in Star Wars, right? You know, Luke goes into the to the cave and he kind of sees um, himself, right? Again, this is very sort of Jungian, um, but again, from a visual standpoint, the idea of sort of like going down into into a cave where you don't know what's there is essentially what we're trying to sort of get get through. So anyway, that's a little bit of um, insight into, you know, how these choices come about. And a lot of what we're doing is we're kind of starting with like, here's where the characters are, there's action, they're moving. And after that, they kind of stop moving, right? They uh, sort of come to a halt and then they go down, right? So the, the last panel is them sort of going down or him sort of offering them to go down. This uh, panel is them running, and these ones really just sort of connect it. This is the transition. There's a resistance there. So that's the general idea of what the page needs to do from a story point of view. Now, let's look at, again, how we sort of storyboard that out, how we sort of make that happen, and then, uh, again, how we do the drawing and how we actually do all the coloring and kind of make that, you know, actually pay off. All right, so if you look at the thumbnail here, you'll notice a few things. Firstly, it's pretty rough. 
Um, secondly, though, it has actually the final text on the page, although, as you can see, we did a few edits on this. But in Photoshop, uh, the way I actually write this is, uh, you know, don't tell any writers I write this way, but I actually just type it into Photoshop. Um, and I found that is uh, actually has a lot of, div of advantages over trying to use any sort of traditional writing program or sort of software. Because again, as an artist who is a writer, um, you know, I don't need to have any descriptions. I can just kind of think about dialogue and my, my mind is tracking the panels and the story as they go. So again, this is a situation where, you know, my process has developed so that I can actually sort of work this way. And I've developed efficiencies that, uh, again, you know, make me, um, you know, able to create in this particular manner. But it might not be exactly how you choose to create. If you do, do it all yourself. And certainly if you're working with a writer or something like that, you, you might need a different process. But either way, what I always like to do is think about the tradition that I was trained in, which is the European bond A tradition, where the artist is actually in control of the lettering in many cases. And I found that to be immensely valuable. So the way I personally start the storyboard process is I put all the text on the page and then I kind of think about how that might actually play out into panels. I have a rough idea of it at the beginning, i.e., you know, in my head what's happening is we're like seeing that previous shot right where the guy is uh, saying uh, the broker Rhodes is, is saying hey where are they right and then you can imagine from a movie right you're then going to sort of cut to this shot where you can see them running right so we're kind of connecting up those ideas and then they're essentially sort of stopping they're arguing with each other and then the robot the tempo character is kind of like you know wrenching up this kind of manhole access port and kind of saying like come with me you know um and uh, that's the basic sort of story structure. So it's really just a matter of putting some interesting dialogue in there and then making sure that we kind of just tell that story. That's kind of how I approach it. But often what I'm doing, as I said, it, with the storyboard is actually putting the words in first and trying to let that actually direct most of the action and most of the way that I frame things. So again, that is from my experience working in the French comic book industry where that's often what you get. And, um, you know, I, I don't really know how to do it any other way. And I have very little interest in doing it any other way because I think with comics, the text and the pictures need to be one, right? They need to have a really strong connection. And it's a lot easier for me to draw what's going to happen in a panel if I can kind of also read what is going to be sort of read by the viewer. So anyway, that's just a little bit of sort of information of, of sort of how I go about it. And, um, you know, the storyboard is really just there to kind of block in that action. And this does communicate with other people because this storyboard needs to be approved. And actually at this stage, we also lock dialogue. So dialogue is locked for um, translation. Because um, again, this comic is actually translated into a large variety of non-English languages, which is awesome. So yeah, part of the goal here is to just make sure that, uh, again, all of that action is there, but the storyboard is super rough. So it, it's really just, uh, you know, a couple of very, very basic, um, you know, sort of squiggles. And what I do after that is I take it to the next stage, which is where um, I add balloons. So we have a sort of a particular section where I add some sort of finalized balloons. You can see how I actually have this layer here that helps me tell where there are balloons and where there are white. You can see we missed one there. Um, and what this is about is just that construction drawing. So this is mostly what I teach on the channel, right? If you look at the Drawing Codex channel, there's a whole bunch of stuff where I'm just kind of doing these construction drawings. I'm doing them in pencil. And that's because, you know, most of the heavy lifting where we take those ideas make them real most of it happens here this construction phase so at the construction phase mostly what i'm trying to think about is how do i turn that really rough thumbnail that really rough idea into a finished story so again you could sort of say oh well the goal there is just draw it right just draw it well um but again part of that is also understanding like how do we sell the backgrounds and the framing here and what is the technical drawing that we need to do? So again, that's what I want to talk about now is again, how do we handle the drawing and how do we sort of handle the storytelling as well? Because in many cases with comics, what we have to do is be pretty brutal with our efficiency. You know, we don't, I don't have all day, every day, especially with this type of schedule on this book to draw super fancy backgrounds, right? When I was drawing French comics, you know, we'd often have quite a while. You could really go crazy with the backgrounds on this. What I'm trying to do is a little bit of the best of both worlds. So 
again, often what we have is like, how can I communicate where they are and communicate that they're running and doing this quickly, right? That really is the goal. How do I kind of get those things happening? So again, from a, from a structural storytelling standpoint, right, you can see that I had the thumbnail, most of that sort of working. And the, the main sort of thing that I'm using is to make it feel as if, again, we have quite an exaggerated camera. Right, the the front character is uh, very sort of big. The sort of character behind is smaller, and the last sort of character is, is smaller still. Right, um, and again, there's also some sort of dynamics. There's these dynamic lines that are going everywhere. I have a little bit of a sort of curve on the perspective here, which again, all sort of makes us feel like maybe this is a bit more of a wide angle lens. Right, it has that sense of motion of movement. Of exaggeration i also have you know these little kind of uh you know speed line things that are a bit sort of like uh, manga anime esque and uh, again these are all just things that are simple iconic elements that i can add to make this work so again it's an overlaying of different ideas here the first is i'm going to show that there is depth and perspective because that sort of shows that there's movement in some way i'm going to use the uh, the perspective lines to kind of warp them make them a little bit more exaggerated and I'm also going to make sure that, again, the poses for the characters are somewhat dynamic. And I'm going to try and play up every sort of movable part of their costume possible. So, again, this uh, the character, the alien character, Moda, has these kind of tentacles, right, that are flying off his head, right? They're going to be flying back. The cape's going to be flying back. Um, a lot of characters in this, despite it being a, uh, a sci-fi, have capes, right? And a big reason that people put capes on superheroes is... So you can show motion. And that's kind of why these designs are like this, right? It's very effective. It also makes it very easy to draw characters from behind because you don't have to draw anatomy. Anyway, um, pro tip there uh, for a character design. So the next thing is, again, what can I put in the background to make it clear that this is on this space station? So this is where, again, I'll show you sort of what some other establishing shots of this station um, sort of look like. Right, so here you can see this is, um, uh, I think this is a splash page from a previous um, uh, episode, right? So that was the first page. And so you can hear this, this is the general idea. It's it's this kind of um, uh, almost sort of like, um, again, sort of squished, uh, spherical, sort of ovoid shapes, just sort of repeated everywhere. Very, very simple iconography. And, um, it, you know, with this sort of green area, right? It's... Um, sort of visually designed very much in that sort of protopian um, Sid Mead era of, you know, 60s, 70s, science fiction, space race. Um, you know, the future's going to be great. Um, we're going to live in these amazing cities with all this kind of designed greenery and stuff. So again, a little bit of that vibe. So what I'm doing here is kind of putting some of those elements in the background here. So those are established. And when someone's reading this, you know, all in one go, you know, if slash when it gets sort of printed finally, you will have that in your mind. And so what I'm doing is just adding those iconic elements, right? We often have these sort of... Um, uh, sort of, you know, elements around here that are essentially sort of planter boxes, right, with sort of greenery in them. Because if you're on a space station and you're used to living on a, you know, planet, you're going to want some form of greenery or um, uh, sort of, you know, organic um, material so that you don't feel um, sort of depressed, right, I guess. So that's the idea there. So we're putting those in um, and we're also putting in uh, a few of these basic uh, shapes, right? And that's just enough to kind of say, okay, this is where we are. The other thing I'm adding is this idea of this kind of giant glass canopy over the top where you can see these little um, sort of asteroids in the background. So it immediately kind of says, even if you haven't seen that in a previous um, in a previous sort of page, it kind of tells us what's happening, right? So here's another sort of version of the, that same thing. And it's just the same visual language, the same visual library repeated, right? Same idea. And this immediately cues us into like, oh, we're outside. Or again, if you're just viewing this from, you know, the, the first time, at least you have a little bit of an idea of what's going on, right? It is kind of clear like, oh, right, there's, that looks like that's kind of floating in space because there's asteroids and stuff in the background. All right, so here we've got them side by side. And as you can see, one of the things I'm often teaching um, here on the channel and in all my courses is that, 
a big part of what is going to actually communicate stuff to a viewer is just kind of getting all the elements there. You don't always have to draw it that well. Um, if you think about the complexity of a scene, foreground, middle ground, background, um, getting depth in there, and uh, even if you draw it simply, it will kind of start to feel as if like, oh, there's a lot of stuff there. So. What you can see is if, if we actually sort of look at the choices that I've made, um, what I'm choosing to draw is this kind of shape behind them there, which is just kind of uh, maybe one of these big, right, one of these big uh, sort of buildings close up. Um, I've got some of these sort of planter boxes down the bottom. I've got some over here. And uh, then in the background, I'm just kind of filling up the space, right? So this is where... You can see in the thumbnail, right, if we can get back to the thumbnail. All right, so if we look at the thumbnail, some of those things are kind of in there, but we're not really quite sure where they are. Once the balloons get in there, then I can sort of, and the characters in there, it's a lot easier to place a lot of these background elements. So most of the background elements here are just placed to show what is happening and also to make sure we've got some nice overlaps with the character. And that really is, um, you know, how they're going to function. That's uh, how they work. That's how this kind of, uh, you know, sort of turns out looking half decent, even though I'm drawing this really, really fast. Same thing here with this panel, right? What I'm trying to do is, again, just frame the character and make it clear again, yes, we're still in that environment. So we have this panel, right, and this panel and this panel, and they don't really give us context for what's happening. So this panel here is the connector, the one right in the middle where we can see him pulling that thing up. We can see behind him there's the same background. This is going to connect all of these things together in the scene and kind of make it work. If I didn't have that, it would be a lot harder to show that context. So again, all of these backgrounds are really just placed there for clarity. And um, again, what I'm doing is just building them around the character, around the main action. So the main drawing that I have to do here from a construction point of view is just construct all the characters, construct all the faces, and construct the major action. The things here that I was sort of worried about as I was working on it were like, uh, you know, would that running posture feel a bit silly? How far should I push it? Right? How cartoony should I make it? And uh, again, I ended up going pretty cartoony and, you know, sort of pushing it a little bit. And, and I think it kind of turned out OK. The other sort of obvious issues that I think from a construction drawing perspective that, you know, I'm really trying to solve here is just like, look, I know I'm going to need to put those ellipses in there properly. So where I need a proper ellipse, I'm going to get out the elliptical marquee in Photoshop. And uh, yeah, all I'm sort of doing is, right, getting that elliptical marquee and we just sort of do a, I think I'm on a, probably on a weird layer there. Let's see if I can get to another layer. Yep, there we go. Okay, I sort of figured it out, I'm on the right layer. Um, so yeah, just draw an elliptical marquee. We're gonna stroke it, right? And uh, again, that gives us sort of this sort of circle here that I can then transform. And that's all I've done. And I've sort of nailed, um, you know, pretty accurately the sort of ellipses there. A lot of this is kind of just faking it, making it up in perspective, using basic construction concepts. But uh, yeah, that's sort of where it, it needs to be. A lot of these other shapes, uh, just freehanding it and uh, yeah, just sort of trying to put it together. Now, this is where, again, just studying your basics, doing understanding how sort of the Loomis mannequins or whatever other sort of constructive anatomy is, is going to sort of work for you functions. Because, you know, the, this is the task that I'm sort of doing all day, every day is just, um, you know, the, okay, the character's got to be bending over, right? They got to be, sort of like lean over and pull something up. They got to feel as if they're sort of pulling it up. Next, they got to sort of like get in this manhole thing and kind of pull it down. So these are all all they got to be running, and these are all just simple tasks where we just got to be like bang, 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 bang. You got to just be able to hit these kind of poses in order to sort of you know be at a reasonable sort of pace on deadline. Um, again, if you're beginning and you're doing comics, you're going to have a lot more time. So you know, don't stress out about this. But again, that's why working these uh, muscles, right, of learning to draw muscles um, and stick figures and mannequins is so important because, again, for me, that's what allows me to just kind of go through and just draw these in, uh, you know, a, a relatively effortless way. All right, so the next step is, again, this is something if you're working on your comic, you really have to figure out exactly where that line is between when do you finish your construction, your planning drawing phase, and when do you start actually doing finish lines? So again, as I'm often sort of talking about, the more you practice this, the more you're actually going to be able to 
not necessarily need construction, right? The more you construct, the less you kind of need to construct as time goes by. Now you can see here underneath a lot of these characters are some very, very simple mannequins, right? But what you've got is that is essentially the construction drawing and this is kind of the finished version. And again, it is a pretty rough treatment, right? We're not necessarily going to the nth degree with any of this drawing. The goal is to get it to a point where it kind of reads, we can tell who the characters are and the story is being told. That really is my goal here. So again, whenever you're kind of making stuff up, um, it's going to be rougher, right? We're going to have mistakes for anatomy. Things are not going to be look as accurate as we would perhaps like. But at the end, I think what happens is when you zoom out and you focus on the whole, what we realize is, again, as long as we're telling the story, that's really all that matters with comics in most cases. But um, as I said, uh, what I'm doing is, is kind of just making up a lot of these details on the go, right? So we can sort of see here, this is the construction, this is the finish. So a lot of these things are just sort of being made up on the fly. And this is a skill that, again, you can also build if you're sort of trying to work on this yourself. But in the beginning, I would do a lot more construction work. And depending on each drawing, essentially what I do is I assess each panel and really figure out, well, how much do I need underneath there, right? So how much do I need here in order to do a passable job here? That is really the question. And with each of these drawings, the answer is gonna be a little bit different. And it also depends, you know, how confident am I feeling that particular day? Um, you know, are things kind of working or not working? Do I need to kind of, uh, you know, work on it more? Uh, do I need to prepare more? Either way, um, in this case, again, it, it's mostly just about sort of having that sense for like, okay, you're ready, ready to progress, or is there a hand there you haven't quite drawn well enough and uh, you really, really should go in and work it. But again, that's something that you progress and refine over, you know, your career over, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages uh, doing this again and again and again. All right, so let's look at a little bit of the Photoshop craft. Um, how are these sort of files being organized? Again, you can see roughly what's happening here. Um, again, my face is blocking a little bit of the layers down below, but doesn't doesn't really matter. You're not really seeing anything. Let me sort of drag it up. There we go. Now, now there's nothing really being hidden. So, uh, again, the, the main thing here is similar to most of the process that I would teach. Again, similar to what I teach in the Quick Start Guide, any of the courses I do. All we're doing is just doing a line drawing. We're adding flat color underneath. And then we're kind of, you know, adding a few simple techniques that really kind of help to sell the rest of it. So, um, yeah, there's a couple of interesting things here that kind of, you know, help. Um, but again, this is what I start with. We've got flat colors. And the next thing I'm going to do is think about some atmospheric perspective. So one of the things that I'm doing here um, is really thinking about the background here, similar to how it might actually occur. I'm imagining there's some kind of blue atmosphere within the station. That doesn't make any logical sense necessarily, but that's kind of how I'm rationalizing the visual language of what's occurring. But I'm actually starting with the idea that, yeah, you know, outside where we can sort of see through the window of the space station that is gigantic, right, and massive, that it's dark, right, and that the asteroids are lighter than that. Uh, again, you know, this is all very cartoony. And what I'm putting over that is essentially just a gradient of blue and what if we sort of add that gradient up it's adding this feeling of atmospheric perspective to the scenes and that actually does similar to what our sort of sky and atmosphere does on earth it makes the sort of the darkness of, of space blue and uh, again I'm starting that gradient from the bottom because that's typically how atmosphere will sort of function you'll have more atmosphere sort of at the lower periphery of sort of uh, skyscrapers or mountains etc so again if you look at a mountain you tend to find there's more atmospheric perspective at the bottom of it versus the top again if you're looking at like a gigantic mountain um, not a hill like gigantic mountain um, and then what i'm doing is uh, just doing that again with the background right so we just repeat that and then i've got another atmospheric layer that is uh, yeah a little bit less blue and this is just separating out the depth in the scene. I'm going to have another one. And then I think I have another one still. So again, there's a few simple sort of constructs that I'm often sort of talking about here. Um, I find that if I actually 
put those atmospheric layers or some sort of blending over the top of the lines and the colors it kind of blends everything together makes it feel a little bit less comic booky which uh, again is something where i'm wanting to strike that balance always between it being super cartoony super graphic but also having some feelings of realism in terms of the way that the colors are homogenized together and also yeah just the way that um again you know there is some atmosphere there is some of these sort of realistic lighting effects so once i'm done with that again the process here couldn't really be simpler that's all that's happening and this is designed so that it's quick and easy and effective now where we have a lot of atmosphere is again where we're looking into the distance when i'm lo not looking into the distance I i'm trying to keep things fairly sort of simple and graphic what I'm adding next is just the sort of color grade layer, which is just where we try and make things look a little bit more interesting. I add a little bit of sort of texture, etc. So let's just break that down and go through that layer stack. Let's get rid of that in case it messes us up. All right. So let, again, let's look at what's happening um, and we'll, we'll kind of zoom up and look at this one. Right. So it's nice and big. Um, oh, maybe not that big when we sort of go through it. Right. So the first thing is just adding this might not even be on that on that layer yeah i think this is this is a bit of extra atmosphere over the top of there right and the next is adding a bit of this there we go a bit of this kind of texture that just kind of roughs it up again stops it looking quite so clean there's no real logical reason for this um, and then I'll often have maybe a few different sort of layers of that, depending on what I'm doing. The next thing I'm doing here is just adding a very simple few sort of um, overlay gradient layers. And what these are doing is just kind of changing the, the gradient of the bottom panel to the top. This is absurdly simple, but, you know, it tends to work pretty well um, if the page is looking a little bit more uniform. Or again, if I want to do is kind of transition the the story of the page from the top to the bottom, right? So we want the bottom to be a little bit more like always kind of descending into this kind of, um, you know, almost sort of like hellish um, red, right? Things are going a little bit from sort of cool to, to, to warm. And again, that's sort of part of the, the story overall. So thinking it's not just a matter of gradients anywhere, but thinking about how we can emphasize the panel changes and get, have some sort of gradient there. Um, again, you could add different gradients to each panel. A lot of this just depends on exactly what's happening, what the page is like. But uh, as I always say, it's often just a matter of doing very, very simple things like this to add a little bit of interest and, and that's kind of, you know, all we need. So over the top of that, I've just got a simple selective color that's kind of taking a little bit of that out, actually. So I, I put that red in and I'm kind of taking that out, homogenizing the colors overall a little bit. And last, we just have some texture that is a mix of these noise layers, right? And I, I have like a, a very fine noise layer, like if you sort of zoom up, this is actually sort of a, you know, like a pixel level noise layer. Uh, and the other thing I have, if we can kind of zoom out, come on, let me zoom out Photoshop. Yeah, the other thing that we, we have here is is a larger noise layer, right? So, so this is one that's actually just the same type of noise layer, it's just been resized, so it feels bigger. And over the top of that, um, we have this sort of paper texture. And so we kind of add all those things up and we get this kind of particular effect. And this is just designed for this book, right? Um, especially because it's a digital um, first release. So, you know, we just kind of want it to not quite look as clean. Um, we may or may not leave these on for the, the final printed book. Um, have to wait and see. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, that's kind of, you know, what's happening on the Photoshop level. Very, very simple techniques. Um, these really are just all, as I said, in service of that overall story, overall intent. But uh, nothing too fancy going on in terms of Photoshop. All right. So I just want to leave you with a few takeaways and things that, again, I sort of think are important about this particular page that might be sort of useful as advice that you can take away. The first is similar to what I was saying before that I think this panel is a great example of, you know, just doing a few basic things correctly. Um, just making sure we have foreground, middle ground, background, make sure we've got depth. And I think, um, you know, and this is where, again, I don't want this to sound too sort of self-deprecating or, or like, you know, the, the drawing is no good or whatever. But, you know, I honestly think, you know, a lot of the drawing in, in this panel is like not that great. 
a lot of the the musculature the anatomy the posing uh, particularly this back leg here is a little bit sort of wobbly i'm not sure if i quite buy it but i think it's a good example of where the story we're trying to tell with this panel is that there's movement right the story that i'm trying to get across is like hey these guys are kind of running away and it's important to always understand that that is a story you're trying to communicate and it's not always a matter of like any one thing necessarily having to hold that up. What we're often looking for is like, you know, three or four ideas that will sort of reinforce the concept of motion, of uh, sort of dynamism, of speed. So that's where I was kind of saying with the storyboard, what I've kind of done is just add as many little things here that are gonna help us with that as possible. It's the characters opposed. Yes, they're moving. The anatomy is kind of okay. Again, I have to draw this quickly. Um, I'm making a lot of this up with the finished lines. But again, you know, we've got all the stuff flying back. That means it's obviously we're moving forward. I've got, you know, some very basic sort of running mechanics happening. Um, again, and I've tried to make sure that, you know, this character almost feels as if they're using the, the sort of crutch to, to move a little bit, which is kind of a fun idea. And um, again, that's just that idea of dynamism of the frame, right? The character in the front is really big, you know, and the one at the, at the back is really small. That is going to do most of the heavy lifting. And the other things that I've added, again, is just that sense of like, oh, we kind of got a big camera here. Um, you got these things in the background, but they're like really, really unimportant. And, um, you know, we've got these little kind of speed line things, a few bits and pieces kind of flying up. And it's often those little bits that'll make the difference between it feeling like, oh, it's a scene, there's stuff happening, feels, you know, a little bit more like, oh, this is a thing from a movie, right? It's kind of like a, a snapshot versus like, here's a drawing of people running that's stiff. So again, it's often, you know, the fact that we maybe let the drawing be a little bit looser. Um, we focus on dynamism. We focus on, again, all of those like stuff's flying. We've got some speed lines, etc. Um, versus like, you know, hyper obsessing about the exact pose, all the anatomy, all of that stuff. So again, I think it's a great example of this panel of, of how sort of less is more sometimes. And also just how little you often need to do with a background. If you think about just getting the basics right, the atmosphere, telling the story and not making sure and making sure the background doesn't try and steal the show. As long as you don't let it steal the show, you, you don't need to put lots of effort into it. People will just kind of register like, oh yeah, they're on a background, right? Mostly what they're going to be looking at is this character and this character. And basically everything else is just going to disappear. It's going to be like that. It's gone. So again, always remember that with comics. Again, unless you're working, you know, uh, you're doing a, you know, a year long a, a BD, a bond SNA, you know, you've got a week for a page. In that case, you know, I'd be going nuts with the, with the background, trying to make it look a, as much as possible. But again, this is a very, very different schedule, right? The other thing, again, that uh, I found is sort of interesting here um, is, uh, again, you know, just how important it is to make sure that the things that you really need to be accurate really should be put in there with a ruler. So what you notice, if you, if you remember sort of looking at the, let's get back, oh, that's right, completely different. Um, page so yeah if we sort of look here at the at the difference between the the finish right and the and the rough here again the interesting thing and a good takeaway is like there's a lot of stuff here that sort of needs to be okay but again like those other poses if it's a little bit wobbly as long as i'm sort of telling the story right i've got a, a few things here that are helping me to tell the story that he's kind of going down right i've got his cloak his cape kind of resting above um, you know, as if it's kind of like rested on the, on the ground there. Right. And then it's kind of like slipping down again. That's a very small thing. It's not necessarily drawn that well, but it helps to tell the story and make it clear that the character is interacting with the environment. Very small thing, but it's often those elements that are going to sell this type of shot more than anything else. As long as you have like your ellipses, your major perspective lines and all of those kind of things sorted. So again, I made sure I did the ellipses properly. I had that structure there. I'm not going to get to it and have those ellipses look a little bit awkward. I kind of, you know, done them, done them in there. And what you notice is, again, you're probably, well, what you're not going to notice is that, again, you know, areas where maybe this, um, you know, sort of character is not necessarily drawn that well, right? There's a couple of errors there. 
And this is where, again, so much of comics and, you know, production work is a matter of noticing and realizing what's going to matter within a drawing, right? So, again, you know, if you need to draw something with a ruler, um, just draw it with a ruler, again, at your construction phase or your, fi your final phase. And a lot of other things you find can be very forgiving. So, the big trick is for you to figure out what you really need to dial in, what will be forgiving, what are people going to notice, what are they not going to notice. And the only way to do that is for you to create a lot of artwork yourself. So this is where, you know, if you want to do this or you want to do something else, um, the real trick is just to draw a lot, you know, and experiment a lot and find those edges for yourself and, and pay attention to what people care about or not care about. So again, when I look at a page like this, I notice a whole pile of mistakes, a whole pile of things that could be better, a whole pile of things that I will make better the next time around. Um, but insofar as we can, you know, get things to look uh, a professional level um, or get to an acceptable level where, you know, someone is going to look at it and, and sort of appreciate it, it's mostly a matter of, you know, again, finding that edge, right, of what you need to pay attention to and what you don't. Um, but anyway, those were my main takeaways of this page in particular, but I actually felt it turned out pretty well. I wasn't sure when I began that I'd be able to sell the idea of them running. I wasn't sure that it would feel dynamic, and it really was just adding those extra little bits that, you know, uh, sort of allowed me to sell it. And uh, again, I think it sort of turned out pretty well, especially when you kind of go from page to page. And the other thing is, again, you know, just sort of selling this idea of that sort of pose. I was a little bit like, ah, oh, that's like a tricky pose. Am I going to sort of pull that off? So there's a couple of things that help there, right? Again, I'm not showing his hand where he's like connecting there. It's like not really even clear what he's doing. Um, again, that makes things easier. And, uh, you know, uh, mostly it's just the the general idea. You kind of get what's happening with the pose from the context. And again, I, I would say it's probably little things like the cape there kind of wriggling down that makes us feel like there's interaction, there's coherence. And that actually makes up for a lot of other areas where maybe we're not sort of dialing everything in perfectly. So anyway, I was pretty happy with how this one turned out, given the schedule, the pace, what it sort of needed to do. Um, and uh, again, you know, it's always sort of fun drawing this type of character, trying to make them feel as if they're the same from, from panel to panel. But uh, anyway, those are my main takeaways from this page. All right, so that's all I've got for this one. Just a informal, relaxed kind of, you know, look at my process and, you know, what I'm thinking as I'm creating this page. Hopefully these ideas have been helpful. Hopefully they help you with your illustrations or comics. And uh, again, you know, I think so much of this is you figuring out exactly how your style works, how your process works. But um, again, my goal with this type of video is to share with you the sort of insecurities, the sort of, you know, things that I'm sort of worrying about as I create a page, the things that I think go well, things that I think don't go well. And uh, again, you know, how I'm often solving the problem that we need to get to with the big story picture here um, you know maybe through you know different means right we all have different strengths we all have different weaknesses we can all sort of you know make these things work in different ways right someone else might focus a little bit more on the characters running and they would really dial in the anatomy whereas my strength is in being able to draw characters backgrounds effects kind of make all these things happen at the same time so that's where again you know one of the things I often talk about and teach and practice is you know focusing on the whole the whole story the short of the image versus you know like sort of little bits and pieces and not obsessing over the drawing that much anyway hopefully these ideas are interesting let me know if you've got any comments or questions or follow-ups in the comments below i'd love to know what you think of this one other than that we'll catch you around happy drawing